Today, I wanna to talk about how to make a distraction-free iPhone or distraction-free Android for you heathens out there. Let's go. I got this idea from a book I recently read called Make Time. They also have a blog post that details this process very, very specifically on how to make your phone a device that truly pushes you forward and enhances your productivity as opposed to harming that productivity and make you an unproductive slob. So the link to the blog post will be down below so you get a taste of where this idea came from. You see, a phone addiction is a wretched thing. It has been hurting our productivity activity since the beginning of the introduction of technological devices and personal technological devices for that matter. It is something that keeps you hooked, keeps you engaged in a sense like a cocaine addict, just going through and going through all of these very addictive apps and addictive systems that are, live within your phone to keep you from doing the things that you need to do every day. I know that I as a student suffer from phone addiction and suffer from watching YouTube too much and suffer from being on technological devices, not doing what I'm supposed to be doing too much. And that is the main reason why I wanted to make this video to share those tips that have worked for me on how to build these very technical systems within your personal devices so you don't have that distraction and you don't have that temptation to start being unproductive or start being an absolute waste man because again as I've said many many times on this channel you can't always rely on your will to get through those temptations of being unproductive. You have to build certain systems that establish very, very high friction to those unproductive activities. And that is exactly what this video is about, so let's get into it. But before we do, if you're new to the channel, my name is Diego, this is Apex of Man. I'm an undergraduate student studying business and computer science at Boston University. And if you're obsessed with self-development, productivity, and how to be a better student, make sure to smash that subscribe button below, hit the bell icon so you don't miss a single video. Let's go. Number one, removal of infinity content. Infinity content are all of those apps or systems within your phone that have an endless infinity aspect to it. This is a term I learned from the book Make Time. It essentially refers to all of those social media or applications that have an endless feed. You know, like Instagram that you keep going down and going down and going down and it's endless. It never stops. YouTube, you keep going down and down and down and all of the plays are on auto loop. So you can keep watching and watching and watching without pressing a single button. Netflix, exactly the same concept. So the first thing you need to do is remove all infinity content. Not only that, but also remove all of the things that remind you of infinity content. So that's apps as well as notifications. I want to quickly hop into my home screen right now. When you see it, you can notice that there are no social media applications here. Scroll to the next page, no social media applications there. Not only that, but I realized in the past couple weeks that I was spending way too much time on YouTube. So I eliminated the YouTube app and I eliminated the Safari app from my home screen so I don't have that temptation to get on YouTube all the time. So as you can see, there are no social media applications here. I don't use social media very much, but for you people out there who are very, very addicted to social media, it's very easy to get addicted to social media. Make sure either you eliminate it from your phone, at least during a period, so you can start getting used to the feeling of not using social media, or maybe you can remove it from the home screen now in this new update to Apple's iOS and remove it from the home screen so you are not reminded all the time that the first thing you see, oh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is, and you don't fall into that loop the first instance when you open your phone. Not only that, but when I go into settings right here, I scroll down to notifications, and as you can see, almost every single notification is off, except for maybe phone so I can get calls and maybe a delivery service so you know when your nice juicy Five Guys burger gets to your door. That is another really really important thing that Make Time mentions because it is incredibly important that the notifications are kept to a bare minimum. You need to control your phone, not let your phone control you because you receive all of these notifications. Whether you like it or not, they're a distraction. They're that little ping that you hear when you're working productively and then you suddenly feel, oh, that's probably important and then it's just whatever. So make sure that you turn off your notifications for almost everything. You don't need to be looking at your phone all the time. There is absolutely no need to do that. And an extra item I wanted to mention here on the home screen of Apple is that when you hold down and press on the home screen and you press these three buttons, at the bottom of the home screen, you can actually hide certain pages. So for example, you can have one of those home screens that is just for the weekend and you unhide it when it's the weekend. So maybe that's where your social media is, maybe that's where your Netflix is, maybe that's where your Hulu is, maybe that's where all of these kind of infinity pools and infinity apps are base that so you can still have them on a home screen but that is hidden during the week so you're maximally productive and then during the weekend you activate it, you have it there and it's easy to keep in touch with your friends, see what everybody's doing, see what party people are going to, see what drinks the... <laughs> 
You can see what party people are going to. You can see what they're drinking. If it's Jaeger, you, you know, you can just keep up with the social scene. Maybe that's a good thing, keeping that just for the weekend. Now, number two, use screen time and restrictions on your phone. This is incredibly important because we all have those apps that we know are taking time from us and being able to understand which apps are taking the most time is incredibly important because you can start designing systems that create friction for those particular apps and those particular things that you're doing on your phone or on your tablet or on your computer. Using screen time is incredibly informative because not only does it give you the information, but it gives you the ability to control your access to those apps. Yes, maybe it's just a timer and maybe you can put a regular code in and you can bypass that timer, but an extra thing that I have implemented in my life is the following. So you jump here into screen time and you can see that you can schedule downtime away from the screen. You can do app limits, for example. You can set communication limits. Not only that, but you can create content and privacy restrictions as well. So being able to do that is incredibly important because you can set a screen time passcode that maybe you won't easily remember and maybe you write it down on a paper and then you hide it inside a box, inside a box, inside a box, and you lock all of those in kind of in a concentric box of boxes. So you know that you won't be able to use those apps if you don't have that screen time passcode. That's what I've been doing for the past almost six months that I've been able to cut down my use of YouTube, for example. I've been able to cut down my use of some of these other apps that were taking a lot of time and productivity away from me. So set that screen time passcode, make sure you set restrictions for those apps that you spend the most time on if they are unproductive apps, and then lock that access. Make sure you don't remember that passcode very easily. Maybe write it down inside a locked note within notes, or maybe write it down on paper, Again, close it in in a bunch of boxes with locks, whatever you need to do, or maybe give it to your sister or your mother or your dad, and then tell them, okay, don't give me this unless it's the weekend, and then in the weekend I'll change it and continually keep updating it so you never remember the passcode. This is an incredibly effective way to keep you online and keep you productive. And number three is kind of a broad topic. It's essentially productivity hacks. What do I mean with this? A few years ago, Apple purchased a company and made it the Siri shortcuts that we know today. A lot of people don't take advantage of this function within the iPhones. It is a function that really allows you to personalize a lot of systems within your phone. So for example, I have it so that when I put on my earphones, it automatically the first thing that happens is not it plays music the first thing that happens is that audible gets opened and it plays my last audiobook so there is absolutely no way that you can feel like being unproductive if you want to listen to music fine but i'd rather listen to an audiobook so i know that when i get on my phone immediately listen to the audiobook the friction to get out of audible and actually find a song or find an album that i want to listen to is a lot higher so, and it reminds me why i love the book and why i'm listening to this so i as soon as i put them on the phone recognizes that they're on it opens audible it plays the audiobook and there are so many different things that you can do with siri shortcut for example that it's an absolute no brainer you need to start using. I'm going to leave a link down below of a shortcut gallery that you can import certain shortcuts from of a guy that did like, I don't know, 150, 200 shortcuts, all based on productivity. And if your phone has those quick things that are going to help you be a little more productive, save a few seconds, save a few minutes and truly put you in the mindset of being productive, that goes a hell of a long way. Let me hop into another recording. As you can see, my second home stream includes the Notion widget. The Notion widget here at the bottom has a link to my favorite pages within Notion. Notion is a personal productivity application that essentially takes care of my entire life. I've recommended here on many, many occasions. It, it essentially organizes my entire life. And from here, you can actually access your pages directly. Notion is a little slow to load because it's not natively on your phone, it's in the cloud, so it's a little slow to boot up. And from here, I can access my YouTube video tracker directly. It takes a little while to boot up, but it takes you here directly. So here I can take account and know what videos I'm doing, what videos I'm going to do next and my ideas for all of the videos. Not only that, but as you can see here, I have the link to the podcast ideas, Apex of Man podcast link down below. Absolutely fantastic on all platforms. Be sure not to miss it. And not only that, but again, I'm very kind of starting to get involved in entrepreneurship space. So I have a link to kind of the startups ideas that I have confidential. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the Notion app widget and those widgets can be accessed essentially by holding down the home screen, pressing the plus button at the top left corner of your screen. And then you can see that you can add all of these things. I know that when I look at my phone, what I can see is the calendar that tells me what I need to do next. My things widget that tells me all of my to do list for today. 
And then when I move to the right and I try to escape all of that responsibility, I see Notion and it just tells me, okay, you need to start creating video ideas or you need to start creating podcast ideas or startup ideas or something. So it really puts you in the mindset of being productive and doing the things that you need to do every single day and not faltering, not not being a, a, just a weak slob and letting your, your temptations take hold of you and just saying, ah, whatever, I'll do whatever I want because your phone is holding you accountable. It's an inanimate object, but you can personalize it so it holds you accountable because you know that in your worst moments, you're not gonna be strong enough to say, okay, let's do what we need to do. Not only that, but as you can see, I mentioned shortcuts. Here's shortcuts at the top. For example, I have the Philips Hue that takes control of those lights, so automatically when I wanna shoot a video, I turn on my phone, poop, hit the fire and nice. That's that said nice little hue back there. Or maybe when I wanna read at night, boom, just hit reading light. I have share availability, for example. This is an incredibly interesting one I found in the shortcuts template that's gonna be linked down below. It takes account of all of your events this week and then tells you what times you are free. Not only that, but kick back and read. That helps me read through the articles that I saved to a read later app such as Instapaper here on the first page, for example. And that really allows me not spend so much time perhaps reading articles or being lost in the endless ether of the internet, looking for information or trying to research some videos or finding something interesting. But I press that Siri shortcut, kick back and read. It takes account of all the articles I have saved in Instapaper, for example, and then it throws them to me in kind of an ordered list and I just keep kind of swiping through them. And when I'm kind of tired of reading articles, I say, okay, that's fine, that's done. Let's move forward. So again, all of these things are incredibly valuable because you need to start taking control of your personal digital devices. You can't let them take control of you and control what you do during the day because you're not gonna get absolutely anything done. And you're just gonna be in the mindless and numb space of just scrolling through social media without any purpose or direction. And I just wanna hammer home the idea of why you should start implementing these tips and why this is a good idea. You see, when you are more productive on your digital devices, you have more free time. This is something that Cal Newport mentions in his book, Deep Work. This man is a computer scientist professor at Georgetown. He's written like a hundred books and he has a family and he never works past 5 p.m. You know, he can spend time with his family. He can spend time raising his children, being with his, with his boys and playing catch. He can read a nice book at the end of the evening. He can build a good relationship with his wife and continue, you know, that communication that is so important in a relationship. You free yourself up from all of the nonsense. You free yourself off from all of the things that are wasting your time because you can't just say, okay, I'm gonna stop using Instagram because we've all said that. And the next day you're still using Instagram because it's so addictive, they were designed for that. So you can't assume that you're gonna be suddenly be an enlightened self and maybe you, you watch a YouTube video and, and you you're really inspired one day, but that's not gonna take you sustainably through that period of trying to detach yourself from social media and from these addictive infinity pools. What you need to do is start building these very, very practical systems to free up your time and truly engage in the things that you wanna engage. Because when you're at your deathbed, you're not gonna be like, you know what? I am so ashamed and so sad that I couldn't watch Friends for the fourth time in a row. That is pathetic. You know what you're gonna say? You're gonna say, damn it, what a tragedy that I didn't spend more time with my family. What a tragedy that I didn't visit Asia and then learned about Buddhism. What a tragedy that I didn't pay attention to my children. What a tragedy that I, I wasn't able to create that proper relationship with my wife or my husband. That is what you're gonna regret. You're not gonna regret not being on Instagram more. You're not gonna regret not seeing more Netflix shows. That's, everybody knows that's true. I know it's really hard to kind of implement that, but if you keep that in the front of your mind and you use these physical and very practical systems to help you out, it's gonna take you a long way bit by bit every day improving a little bit i know it's helped me and i'm sure it will help you and i know right now this may sound like a pain it's taken me a long time to tinker with this system on my phone and truly make my phone and my ipad and everything else digital that i use as productive as i can and eliminate all of those distractions that pull me in the wrong direction but it's an investment now to be productive in the future it's an investment now that takes time and takes effort because you have to sacrifice certain things in the present to be able to achieve the things you want to achieve in the future unless you want a mediocre life and i don't think anybody wants a mediocre life what you need to do is really understand how highly do you value your time how highly do you value your time do you value your time enough to make this initial investment and create all of these smaller systems and really create personal digital devices that help you be productive or not. That's something you need to think about. Time is the only thing we can't get back. Time is the consumer of all things. It brings all things to an end at some point. And you don't want your life to just be an endless numbing of Netflix shows, social media scrolling, TikTok watching, and all of these pathetic things that don't let you move forward and don't give you any real satisfaction, any real goals or skills or knowledge. That is 
that is a tragedy. You need to start acting and moving and doing things, hard things that increase your ability within the world, make you a more effective person, a more effective individual. And that is why you should really try and follow these three tips because man, the possibilities are endless. Elon Musk can do it, why can't you? So that's it for me. If you're still hanging around here, be sure to smash that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss a single video. Again, new videos out every single week. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like more content like this, be sure to check this video out on the five apps I use to stay productive during quarantine. Notion is included. It's a little more in-depth view into my Notion pages, which I think you're really gonna like. And the second one is how I train my brain to like doing hard things and forget about all these distractions and really focus on those nitty gritty things that you need to do every single day to be successful. Thank you so much for your support. See you in the next video.